Hi plant people, how's it going? I just wanted to make another house plant tour to update you all on the status of my plants. Quick disclaimer, I actually filmed this video a week ago, so if you see some things in the video and you think, hang on a minute, that isn't like that, I've seen something very different from that. You're not going crazy, you're absolutely right. I haven't had time to film this week because I have a lot on, so I had to film last week and then kind of film an intro because I forgot and stuck it on the front of this video this week. So if you see some things and you think that's not quite right, you're not going crazy. So I've tried to make this video a little bit shorter than my previous video, so hopefully that has worked in the edit. Without further ado, please enjoy my house plan tour. Please make a cup of tea or coffee, grab a snack, sit down and enjoy. Hi everybody, welcome back to my house plan tour. I'm gonna take you around in the exact same order I took you around last time, just so you, you know, you get a good sense of where things are and how things have changed because I don't want to confuse anybody by doing it in a different order. So without further ado, let's go. I'll just give you a quick pan of my living room. If I rotate. Ooh, some things have changed. And this is my peace lily. Not too much has changed from last time. Um, well, I guess a couple of things have changed actually. She has more leaves, but they're all quite small. Like, I don't know if I can get a good shot of it. You can kind of see where the new ones are. It's really difficult to shoot this plant. That's a new leaf, but it's just not as large as the other ones. Um, obviously, just because it's lower light, you know, conditions right now and everything else, it doesn't really bother me because I feel like the leaves that are coming in are kind of filling the gaps a little bit more. Um, so it doesn't really bother me to be honest, but there is one cool thing that is appearing on said plant Can you see that? Ah. So excited It's my first bloom that I've got on my peace lily. I've had this since I think late summer and it had blooms on it when I got it but There's never been any since and I honestly thought it was too cold for this thing to bloom. So I'm super excited about that So yeah that is my giant peace lily and my god it is huge it must be a meter tall the next plant i have for you is my beautiful calathea magic star just chilling not much to it not much has changed from when you will have seen it oh, i don't know two videos ago maybe um it has a new leaf though sorry if this camera wobbles i will try my best to keep it steady the new leaf coming out it does nothing but grow new leaves like it's just such a grower I still have a problem with the brown tips and I still have not replaced the soil, but as I said, I have new soil as of now. I just don't actually know if I'm gonna have enough for this plant, um, but I really wanna replace the soil sometime soon just to see if it helps. Um, but we'll see how it goes with that. It's got, I'll have to sit on the sofa to show you this part. Uh, that's the back of her. Just chilling, pointing leaves back over. I'm starting to put the uh, rope lights on behind the TV a lot and I'm just setting them to like magenta and I'm actually using them kind of as grow lights, which I think is a really good hack um, for a kind of like a grow light that you can't see. So I have been using that. I actually, my theory is that that's why that's blooming right now because I leave for work every day and I actually leave those LEDs on and I just have a feeling that that's actually what's helped it gain the ability to bloom. Um, who knows? But yeah, that's my Calathea Magic Star, just chilling. Over here we have the beautiful, gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous Stromanthi Trio Star. She is looking, to be honest, she's getting a bit big now. I actually genuinely think I'm gonna have to prune her down because I don't, I'm not so sure she should be this big. Um, if you look here, these two stems, I will kind of zoom in on that one. These here, these two leaf nodes, I'm considering cutting underneath them and actually propagating, um, you know, the top of the plant because I think I'm gonna trim it anyway and obviously I wouldn't wanna waste a good piece of plant. So I think I'm gonna propagate those out and then I, I don't think I'll keep uh, the resulting two plants if they are successful. I'll probably just give them away to friends and family, I think. But she's looking pretty awesome. She does have new leaves coming out all the time. You see that there? Focus, please. Yeah. Oh, actually, I've missed something behind her. Uh, na, 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 na. It's hard because things have changed and I couldn't remember that they changed. So I've actually missed this, the Sansevieria that I got in my plant haul. I've actually popped him here for now. 
um, underneath my light. However, I didn't actually have a pot that would kind of go with the aesthetic that I'm kind of working with here in this corner, so I think I need a black pot, so I'm just gonna have to wait until I find one, to be honest. But it does look a little bit weird with a gray pot, but I will find a black pot and everything will be made right again. On the table here, because I don't think I had anything on the table last time, we have the beautiful Peperomia Rosso. It has a bit of a bloomage situation going on there. Sorry if I can't hold the camera very well here. I wouldn't necessarily say it's grown, but it has started to kind of flip its leaves up to get to the light. I guess it's on to this corner over here, but I think I'll talk about this little guy first because he's on his own in this corner, so I will show you my... You will have seen this before, again, if you've seen my favorite large houseplants video, you will know that he featured in this. And he is a Calathea Velvet Touch. Again, I cannot remember the official name for him because it's very long, but he's very beautiful. He does have some new leaves, actually, since you may have last saw him, I think. There's a new one. I think that one there is new as well. He's basically just filling in his own gaps. I've moved him back over here today, um, but he has actually been sat right down there uh, in front of the window. But I've moved him just for today so he can just live his best life over there because that is where he lives. I've just been wanting to make sure that he gets the correct amount of light, but he is still as beautiful as ever. He still has his beautiful velvetiness to him. And he's still one of my favorites. He is gorgeous. Oh, actually, before I take you any further, that is my uh, humidifier that I got. When did I get that? Like a month, month and a bit ago. And it basically just preserves the humidity in the room. It's a very strong humidifier. It has a huge capacity and it is nearly empty. I need to refill that. It's got like less than an inch of water left in the tank. But basically, I'm not even misting my plants anymore. I'm actually just running the humidifier and the room the humidity in the room is just being preserved. So although I spend quite a bit of money on this thing, it's actually saved me a lot of time and energy because I don't, I literally don't even sweat about the humidity in the house anymore. I just, you know, let this run, keep it topped up. It's fine. I set a percentage of humidity that I want it to keep for me and it's good. So very pleased with that purchase. Uh, let me know if you'd like me to do a review on exactly what it is, the features it has, etc., and I will. Um, because it's very useful. It even does hot and cold mist. So for Calathea, having like a warm mist instead of a cold mist just is just great for them because if you think about the rainforest, that replicates it pretty damn well. So yeah, if you'd like me to do a review video on that, do let me know. Also, the display is not actually flashing there. That's the, the camera. So over here, we have my Philodendron Brazil and it is pretty hard to get a video of because I have to crouch right next to it because there's no space. So I'm sorry if it's wobbly. Um, I don't think, I don't think it's grown that much since the last video, but I guess time will tell. Let's see if I can get a better shot of it. There we go. It's not very um, variegated and I, I just think it's just a dark house. I'm trying my best, but it's not the good, it's not the best time of year. But I think for the most part, it's happy. It gets a lot of light, believe it or not. Um, and it just chills here, but it's pretty happy. Plenty of new shoots here. You can see that and that as well. So it's okay. It's not doing amazingly. It's not doing terribly. It's just holding its own, I suppose. So since you've last seen this area, obviously a few plants have moved. Um, some of them have come from downstairs. I, I mean, I haven't filled all the gaps yet, but I'm not honestly in any rush to because I just, I don't want to start plant hoarding. I'm kind of on a no buy at the minute, but I will show you what is there. We shall start with the Silver Anne, is it? Silver Anne Satin Pothos that has a new leaf coming out, finally, after all that time. Um, so that's living here in one of the Ikea pots that I bought. I am going to combine it with the other satin pothos I think today if I can find an appropriate pot for it so that should look a lot cooler in about two hours time um, after that we have I think it's the Calathea Freddy I feel like someone corrected me on my plant haul video when I got this but I actually can't remember what they said it was so I'm very sorry again 
if I've got that wrong. <laughs> but yeah, he's basically in the same state as when I got him. He hasn't changed. Still got some, oh, can't focus. Still got some great tips there. Again, he's not in the uh, terracotta pot. He's sat in a nursery pot just to protect him and his moisture requirements. In addition to that, I have this amazing cactus that you may have seen in my Ikea haul. Uh, if you haven't seen my Ikea haul, go watch it. But um, no, this cactus is not from Ikea. It's actually from, I think it's called Iwantoneofthose.com. So if you're interested in that, uh, take a look. Although you can get them on Amazon, uh, etc. But I just really, really wanted a cactus light. I've teamed it up with an LED light that actually runs along the back of the glass table. Again, when I'm out at work, I actually turn it on and use it uh, on a magenta setting and use it as a grow light for that bad boy down there. Um, just to help the plants out because it, this corner can get really, really dark. However, I do try and keep my low light plants here. This is my Syngonium... Oh, I don't know. I know it's a Syngonium, otherwise known as an arrowhead. It's still got those two new leaves coming in. Um, they have not come out yet. They're still just chilling in there, still hiding. Um, I haven't really done anything with this. It's still in its little pot inside this pot. I don't know if I'm going to repot it yet. I might need this pot for something else that I might also be doing today. I'm doing a lot of plant related things today. Can you tell? Um, so I'm just going to leave this for now. See what happens with it. See how it progresses. And if I move backwards, we will see none other than Gus living his best life on here. Um, I put him on here because I think it's actually a really nice place for him, especially since the pot is all spherical and the pot actually doesn't go with, well, anything else in the house. So I'm actually kind of glad that he's up here. He does have new growth right here and here. Also, I mean, this is just ridiculous, but he is getting, how can I focus on this? Here, he's getting a new bloom in the center there, right by that leaf. I know that's hard to see. That's a new bloom coming in. Now, this is ridiculous because I keep cutting the blooms off and they keep coming. I thought a Maranta blooming was not a common occurrence. This Maranta will not stop blooming. Like, it won't. Um, a bit controversial. I don't really care about the blooms anyway. To be honest with you, they're not the best looking uh, blooms that I've ever seen. Um, plus, mine only really last a day and then they're gone, so don't care too much for the blooms but I mean it's kind of cool that it is blooming all the time I guess it means I'm doing something right um, my second theory is that it's pop bound which is possible um, yeah and this is my rubber plant still doing fine again no growth whatsoever I can't really move them into a lighter spot right now because I just don't have the means but I probably will try in spring we'll just see what happens with him but he is exactly the same as he always was so yeah, that's my little stand. Those are my plants that can be found on the top. As I say, I haven't filled all these slots up yet, but I will. At the minute, that's kind of low humidity in here. To be honest with you, I don't like those numbers. I would prefer it to be at least 60. However, no sooner have I just said that, the humidifier has actually kicked in. So the humidifier knows fine well that it's not the uh, humidity that I set it to be. So it's kicking in. So that's a really, really big help can totally recommend spending a bit more uh, on a humidifier and getting something that literally does your job for you. Um, so underneath here is my beautiful Calathea orbifolia. Now, as I may have shown you before in the last video that I featured it in, it's not doing the best. It could be doing a lot better. Um, part of me thinks, to be honest with you, it's drafts because that's my door and the, the cold that comes from the hallway is Honestly, it's extreme, extreme levels of cold. Um, I have taken some measures to counteract this, namely this. Uh, believe it or not, that is cling film. Yep, that's the genius hack I came up with to preserve A, humidity, and B, temperature uh, around the plant. So I've actually just cling filmed both sides of this table in an effort to just preserve his little, you know, microclimate and just kind of protect him from the drafts. I mean, I can't really move him beyond any of that. He, he has to live here. There's no other space for him, but he's doing okay. 
Well, I think this actually concludes the living room section of the plant tour. There you go. That is my living room plants. Almost in the same state as what you last saw them, but you know, I find it quite interesting to see how plants change over the winter, so. There you have it. Oh, so good. And this is my bedroom again. Not much has changed. Uh, you'll have seen this guy a few times. My uh, smaller Calathea Trio star. He does have some crispy tippage. Um, could be doing better, if I'm honest. I'm not actually sure what it is. I don't know if it's a light scenario or not. Um, the footage I can see on my camera right now looks pretty darn light, but I'm not actually sure if, uh, if it's accurate, to be honest, because we've had a lot of dark days. I think I'm just really lucky today in getting a nice bright day to film. Um, so I don't really know what the crispy tip's about. Um, yeah, I, it kind of started crisping up after I came back from holiday. So I don't know if it's just damage from that time and it irritates me a little bit because I wasn't here and I don't know what happened to them to cause this damage. So I can't really figure it out. That's by the by. So that's my smaller Calathea Trio star. Oh, in here right now. It is very cold. It is 16.4 degrees. It's 58% humidity. That's quite low. It'll be fine though. I'm not too concerned about that. Over here is my... One of my Sansevierias. Um, you can probably see the tape there. I have had a bit of a fungus gnat issue. I'm waiting on some diatomaceous earth coming in the post. So I can literally sprinkle it on the top. And sort that out and get rid of the gnats. So that's one of my Sansevieria. And... This is my second twin of the first. I don't, again, I don't really think any new growth has happened, really, as this is winter season. I'm not really expecting a great deal. There's a couple of new leaves, though. It's not, it's not completely dormant. I'll just zoom out. There's my Sansevieria. Now, you all know who this is. This is, of course, Big Al, my giant alocasia. He's actually popped out a new leaf recently, which is amazing. Excuse the car going past there. Um, the leaf is smaller than the others, but it doesn't really worry me very much. I just can't believe he even popped out a leaf, if I'm honest with you. I'm quite surprised. I read that alocasia are the type of plants that go like extremely dormant in the winter. So I'm kind of surprised to see that it isn't. I mean, maybe it is, but you know, if it's put out a new leaf, that tells me it's not really that dormant, so interesting to be honest and up here we have i promise you it's not actually sad it just looks a bit sad in its pot because i changed the pot so it's changed the way that the plant kind of sits try and lift the camera up the best i can that is my what is it it is my philodendron i couldn't even think of what it was my hartley philodendron right there again it's got growth on it and i'm kind of surprised because it shouldn't because it's winter What's going on? I don't know. And over here, this is my asparagus fern. This is borderline my pride and joy, to be honest with you. Love it. It's got bigger, I think, from the last video. I'm not 100% sure. I feel like it definitely has got a little bit bigger. I'm not trying to grow up bigger or anything, though. I'm just trying to maintain how he currently is. But he's really cool. I love how, like, just... It's hard to explain, but the leaves are just so bendy and soft. Like, he looks like he would be, like, um, uber brittle, but he's just not. He's surprisingly hardy. I think he's great. I love him. I'm sure you guys know what this is. This is my Calathea White Star. It is an absolutely gorgeous plant. If you're ever considering getting one, I highly, highly recommend. Um, some people call this plant the Onata on steroids. It's pretty awesome. And also, I don't know what um, kind of governs this, but the leaves can get a flush of pink down the middle of them. I don't know if it just has to be an older leaf for that to happen, because a lot of these have it. Uh, I'm not really sure, if I'm honest with you. A little bit confusing. I'm not sure. Um, but it's... Oh my god, it's gorgeous. It just... It goes so well as a bedroom plant, I feel like. You know, because of all the white on my uh, dressing table. I just think it looks incredible. Oh, it's one of my favourites. It's doing very well. No new growth. I think I've had like one new leaf since I've got it, to be honest. So again, not really expecting anything with it being the winter. 
so that is my bedroom. The bedroom that me and my boyfriend sleep in. Those are the plants that we keep here. As I say, you've seen all of this before, but there's no real update to give you, at least in here, I don't think. Nothing apart from Big Al popping out a new leaf. Okay, so a couple of things have actually changed in here, I would argue. Uh, there is a new addition down there that I know you guys know about if you watch my plant haul. And the pothos, I'm pretty sure the pothos is getting longer. At least this one is on the right, which makes me super happy. Um, it's I've kept it as minimal as possible in here, but we do have kind of a... Not a nursery section down there. It's just these are plants that I really need to get kind of more light. I don't really want to risk, you know, keeping them in a place that's too dark and killing them because they're some of my favorites. So I'm kind of keeping them there to heal them, if you will. Um, one thing you may notice, actually, now that I think about it, is the butterfly palm that I had. Butterfly palm? A wrecker palm. Whichever one you want to call it. Um, that's not there anymore. I actually gave that away to my dad. So he currently has that plant at home. So I'll just take you round. Sorry for the camera shake. This is my beautiful Calathea. Is it a Burl, Burl Marks? Burly Marks? I'm not sure. Calathea Fishbone. Again, if you have the name, tell me. I know someone told me in my last plant haul, but I can't remember the name of it. It's gorgeous though. It does have new growth. Right there and there. Plenty of new growth. It's looking pretty good. It just sits and chills in this corner. It's looked happier in recent days, actually. It looks a lot perkier now than what it has done. I think just because we're getting more sun than we did have. Um, as I say, my golden pothos, I'm pretty sure that these are longer than last time. And this makes no sense to me, really, because this thing has been getting less light than, well, effectively, my last tour. So I'm not really sure how these things are even managing to grow. But don't get me wrong. You know, I'm pretty happy about it. I'm not complaining. Some books there. I moved the um, little plaque that I had downstairs up here because I have no use for it now since I bought the new little stand, I guess. Before I go to the other side, I will just show you what's down here the best I can. I'll sit, sit on the bed. So here we have the absolutely stunning Alocasia Zabrina. It's still small. Hang on, let me move this out the way. Sorry, that will be quite shaky. Move that out of the way so you can see. The stems are just to die for. Like, honest to God, tell me that's not beautiful. Just tell me that's not beautiful. Right, show you it from up top as well. Gorgeous, gorgeous plant. So I'm keeping that here because that cost me a lot of money. That cost me 15 English pounds for that. Okay, I'm sorry about that. I actually had to close the blinds because my camera is getting overexposed and you couldn't see anything. However, I will continue. So yes, Alocasia Zabrina, looking beautiful, looking small. Just wanting to make sure it gets enough light. That's why it's living in here. And over here is my Peperomia watermelon. Let me just see if I can rotate it a little bit so you can get a sense of it. It's gorgeous. It's just too big for downstairs. So I need to divide it, propagate it. I don't really know yet. I haven't figured it out. There, hopefully the sun will stay in. So that's, that's her. Gorgeous, don't get me wrong. It's just, it's too large for my living room right now. And last, but definitely not least, is my Alocasia Stingray. It's, there's nothing wrong with it. It just started bending towards the light, like a lot downstairs. It's actually what inspired this, you know, plant move to have it, you know, living up here for a bit. So there's nothing wrong with him. I just, you know, Gave him a little bit of extra support to hold him up. But he's doing fine. No new growth at all. So I, I do actually feel like this one's gone full on dormant. But it's still beautiful. It's the leaves. Oh. The leaves look so good. So yeah, he'll be living up here till, well, possibly till spring if I'm honest. We'll see what happens. Not really sure where things should go. If you have any suggestions on where these could go in my house or generally how low light they will take because I'm not actually even sure about these three. Um, please let me know because I would like to know, you know, if I can actually move these and have these somewhere where I can actually enjoy them. Because, because in this room, um, well, I never come in here. <laughs> this is a guest bedroom, so they get all the fun of having the alocasia in the window. Um, I do kind of move the plants when guests come, but yeah, so if you know anywhere where I could put said plants, then uh, please let me know. 
and I'm pretty sure this concludes the plant tour. Thank you very, very much for watching. I will try and get a better tour next time. It's been very difficult today with the sun basically coming in and out all the time. I've had to stop and start filming this thing so many times. So if it isn't a continuous take, um, that's why the sun's just blowing out my camera, which really sucks. But anyway, thank you very, very much for watching. I will see you in the next one, guys. Bye.